Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial. My name is Nathaniel Dodson. Today I want to have a quick crash course, a throw down, a get down, just mix it up a little bit, but very quickly take a look at how to do higher end beauty retouching, some of the techniques that go into it and some of the stuff that you can take and apply in any type of photography from wedding photography to just your normal family portraits to you know, higher end studio stuff and commercial work and everything in between. There's a lot of cool stuff. I think you'll really like it. There are going to be parts of the tutorial that I speed it up a little bit uh, because I'll just be doing like dodging and burning and healing and stuff like that that frankly is kind of boring to watch. But I'll speed that stuff up, but I'll make sure that I explain everything that I'm doing along the way so you can learn as much as possible. Let's jump into Photoshop and get this thing started right now. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, full disclosure, I am using a stock photo. So she's already kind of been retouched a little bit, um, but there's some stuff I want to go in and adjust. And I just want to walk you through some of my workflow and how I go about doing this. So first and foremost, when I bring my image into Photoshop, I have either taken it into Lightroom or uh, for more intense retouching like this, I'll just do it in Camera Raw where I make some adjustments. So let's just apply a Camera Raw filter to our uh, layer here. And I'm going to go Camera Raw filter. And what what I like to do usually is reduce the contrast a little bit because we can always add contrast later, but I'll usually reduce the contrast and depending on how hot the, uh, the highlights are on the model's skin, uh, it all depends on how, uh, how far away the lighting modifiers, how small the lighting modifiers were, um, you're going to have harsher and brighter, hotter highlights. Those can, uh, those can be a little more tricky to retouch and um, they just, I don't know, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb and you can kind of, you can tone and add them in later uh, by boosting contrast. Uh, so I'll usually tone down my highlights a little bit and particularly the whites as well. I'll turn all that stuff down a little bit just to immediately give the skin a bit of a softer look. Um, and sometimes what is also required, again, depending on how shadowy the photo is, how heavy the shadows are or not, uh, you'll have to turn your shadows up just a little bit. I'll just give them a little kick. In this case, I don't need a lot. I'll just go like plus five just to infuse a little bit more light in some of those darker areas of the image. Then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And what we have is the base sort of flat version of the image uh, on which we're going to work. So I never like to attack without a plan. And the way I get that plan is using a couple different layers. I add a curves adjustment layer, and you've probably seen people do this when you look for sort of sensor spots. You just go and give this big inverted curve. You can do like a, a double inversion, something like this, and it will help you pick out sensor spots really quickly. Like you can see right here, there's some spots on the background, stuff like that that may need to be cleaned up. Um, but what I also like to do is use it to kind of mark up the skin a little bit as well. You can even go and turn the opacity of the layer down if it's a little too intense uh, and go over the skin and find little areas that maybe you want to adjust. Now, instead of leaving this on the whole time, I will create a notes layer. So my notes layer, I'll just take my Wacom tablet, I'll, I'll zoom in first, and then I will take my tablet here, let me just get it slid into place, and use my brush tool. I'm going to use a small hard edge brush. I'm just going to reset the opacity and flow of my brush. And what I can do is go over the image and just mark areas that I think need to be cleaned up, right? And you can even do stuff where it's like, see, there's like a brighter area on her skin right there, right? Like I can just mark that and just go through and you can pick out areas. So I'm just going to go over this image really, really quickly and mark up some of the areas that I think need to be adjusted and cleaned up. And uh, well, I'll be back here in just a second. All right, so I'll back this out and I can see here just roughly, I'm not getting into the hair right now, just roughly uh, what I've got on her face. The only hair we're going to touch on is these little wispies hanging off the side of her, uh, her cheek there. But I've seen a lot of other photographers, a lot of other retouchers and photographers who they like to use different color codes. And I usually do do that as well. But just to keep things simple here, I'm just circling everything. But you could use like a blue for stuff that I know this is dodging and burning and yellow for little skin blemishes and things like that. And then I'll, I like to get rid of my curves layer. Although, you know what I didn't circle was this stuff out here. Of course, the, the big obvious initial spots out there, although that technically does not have to do with their skin. So we probably won't get to it. I'm going to delete the curves layer. And what I then would do is go over it a second time. And sometimes what I would even do is add like a black and white layer just to get rid of color and allow me to examine just the skin tones uh, and see what's going on. Make sure I grab my uh, notes layer and you can go through and make all those sort of adjustments and the, something like this, uh, a, a, a sort of a beauty mark or a birthmark 
only that kind of stuff only uh, gets removed if the the model or the the client who you're working for specifically requests it. Uh, usually, my rule is if it's not going to be there in like a month's time, we just get rid of it. So trim it up around the eyebrows, stuff like that. I like to get rid of that stuff, um, and just in general, make the skin overall very perfect. I'm I'm talking about blemishes that won't be there uh, in a month's time. Uh, so we could spend all day tweaking and adjusting. I'm not going to go down into the neck very much, but you can see there's some areas down in the neck as well, stuff like that. But once you kind of have your plan of attack and you know what you're looking at this is your notes layer so you can go through and and just reference this as you're working i'm going to delete the black and white layer just reference this and make sure you're making progress so now that we have our notes layer we well i like to begin and not by using the patch tool but by using the healing brush so i'll grab my healing brush the healing brush not the spot healing brush healing brush and i like to use a very hard edge healing brush so we don't destroy the integrity of the skin texture and then a very small healing brush right and we're going to reduce the diffusion as well because that gets rid of that edge blending and blurring it just gives us a little bit of it so it's a like a, a slightly more powerful version of the clone stamp tool maybe push diffusion to two but i think we'll stick with one and i'm going to say current and below layers so we're going to add a new layer and we're going to call this uh blemishes or blems or whatever you want to call it and I'm going to shut off notes and I'm just going to begin going over this image and holding down my alter option key and just getting rid of any of these little blemish skin marks that I don't like. And I'll take my time doing this. I'll speed the video up here and uh, you can just watch me fly through this. And I like to turn my notes on and off as I'm going and just to get through this as quickly as I can, and I'll be right back with you. And there we have it. And it also does help to just zoom out, shut your notes off, and look over what you got. Like I said, I'm not gonna move down into the neck right now, because maybe down here around the lips, uh, something that I did notice while I brushed by, a little bit of like dryness there. And also, you may wanna go in and even remove the little hairs that just are sticking out, and just replace them with skin texture, just to provide even more of a smooth transition. So you would go through and spend as much or as little time, obviously do it as quickly as you can, uh, but spend the time that needs to be spent to quickly clean up all those little blemishes uh, and things like that. But like I said, zoom out every once in a while, just take a look at the whole overarching uh, picture and make sure you're not missing anything. So there's a little light spot there that's kind of annoying and a lighter pour over here. And she already has incredibly beautiful skin and she's been retouched once before. So there's not gonna be a huge amount left for us to do. Uh, but if we shut off our blemishes, there's before and there's after. Now I did talk about these wispy hairs here on the edge of her uh, jawline. A couple ways you can get rid of them. You can go with your healing brush, set to replace. You can try that. I will probably create a new layer for this in case you decide to reduce the opacity. So I'll call this like hairs or Harris as I did there. And I'll make my brush a little bit larger and we can try painting alongside here. And this is going to be a little rough or maybe a lot rough, but we're just going to go for it here and see what we get. And you'll see here how we kind of dial this in in just a second. Uh, and then we just reduce the opacity. So if we reduce the opacity, you can see it does it does that. That doesn't look all that great. So I'll probably just uh, delete that and turn the opacity back up. And the second method is using the clone stamp tool, reduce the opacity quite a bit. And in this case, I will use a soft edged brush. So hardness set to zero. In fact, I probably could have used a soft edge brush with the uh, healing brush set to replace. And then just go in here and just paint over the hairs. The goal isn't necessarily to make them go away perfectly because you do, you do still kind of want some texture there on the edge of uh, the jawline. The goal is just to make them not quite as visible. That's, that's it. Uh, because you, you really don't want your work to be sticking out like a sore thumb. Uh, and this is a nice way to do that. You can just get in there with that clone stamp tool and just sample out in the gray area somewhere. And just with a nice, you know, lighten up that opacity, you can go over it and just make the hairs look not quite so pronounced, right? And your edit also looks nice and um, it's just concealed. It's not it's not sticking out uh, like crazy. All right, so I said this was just a very quick crash course. Um, so I just want to touch on two more things. Uh, number one is dodging and burning. So, and I don't mean the dodging and burning used to accentuate accents. I'm going to talk about dodging and burning to flatten her face even more, flatten out some of the shadows and highlights. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first and foremost, I like to dodge and burn using two curves layers. I set my top curves layer to the screen blend mode, and you can name it uh, dodge if you want. Hit Command or Control I to fill the mask with black. Select the bottom, uh, the uh, bottom curves layer, excuse me, and set it to multiply. Select that mask, Command or Control I to fill it, and uh, then above this, 
again, we're going to get rid of the color because the dodging and burning, we're just trying to isolate the tones. So we can do something like, I'll, I'll tend to use a gradient map adjustment layer here because it's higher contrast. And then on top of that, throw a curves adjustment layer and boost the contrast even more. So I'm really going to pull down until the shadows. What I'm looking for is the shadows on her face. I want them to get really dark, but I don't want them to get like solid black. So I want them to get really, really dark. And then I'm going to pull up on some of the highlight areas and just increase that contrast overall. And what this is going to allow me to do is zoom in and identify like right there, right? That's kind of a darker patch in her skin. Now in our notes, we'd already identified that, but you can see how easy it is to spot it here, right? And as we correct or adjust these things using our dodge and burn layers, we're going to see those uh, corrections made in real time. So we're going to go down to our burn layer. I like to burn first but you can really do whatever you want. And what I'm first going to try to do is soften the shadow here along her jawline. So here's really the important thing about the dodging and burning. You want to use your brush tool, right? You want to use a very soft edged brush. You probably don't want a very big brush and you want to either reduce the opacity way down or what's probably better to do is reduce the flow way down. And by reducing the flow way down, I usually do it at like 2%, something that's super, super uh, low because what that allows me to do is just paint over this area. I'm painting on the mask for the burn layer. Maybe I should name this layer burn just so we can see what's going on. And then this layer here is going to be dodge. And I'll paint on the mask for the burn layer and I can just go over it and really see the change as it's happening. You can see here, I'm pulling this, I'm pulling a lot of burning in, too much. So I'm actually gonna undo that because I was just doing that to kind of show you what was going on. One thing that may be useful for you if you've got a tablet is go into brush settings, just shut off shape dynamics, try to get rid of the pen pressure as much as you can, uh, just so it's one less variable to think about. And you can just very gently go in and begin playing with this. See, I'm gonna even reduce opacity a little bit as well. So you just go in, and you're just going to help flatten this stuff out, right? Where the shadow comes out underneath the chin, just sort of fade it out into the skin a little bit uh, a little bit here and a little bit there. And by the way, you're going to do the same thing with your uh, highlights or the dodging. So I'm going to go dodge. I'm going to say, you know what? I want to brighten up the shadow here along the, the side of the chin here. Maybe I'll make my brush a little bit bigger here, something like so. And just very gently going through and trying to make the tones match a little bit better than they do right now. They're on the top of the lip, come right through there. I'm gonna go back to the burning layer and I can just keep painting with black. I'm sorry, I can keep painting with white because my mask is black and that's going to uh, just fade all this together. Here, the shadow on the side of the nose. Just pull it together, make sure it fades nicely. Right, the shadow here under the eye and maybe I wanna lighten up under the eye, right? You can do both. You can mix it together, fade everything together, just make it look uh, as, as nice and as smooth as you can get it. And again, you may spend 20, 30 minutes on this particular part. I'm not going to hear, uh, just for the sake of everybody watching, but you know, take your time doing this as you're doing it. And you're going to get really, really nice results. And this is a huge part of getting that super ultra smooth looking skin that you see a lot of these top uh, commercial or beauty photographers getting. It's this step right here. Of course, it's it's great healing and getting in and cleaning up the skin, but it's also flattening the skin out with dodging and burning. If we shut off the dodging and burning so far, you can see there's what it was before. And here it is now. You can see how much we're, we're just changing the complexion of her face, the way her face is, um, is being lit. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger here as I go through and try to soften this part a little bit, something like that come through underneath the eye over here and underneath the eye uh, eyebrow and then up here on this part of the face you can see how we're just very subtly just brightening that right up so when we shut off our black and white layers if we shut off dodge and burn we had that little bit of a shadow and now we don't that kind of stuff makes a massive difference uh, when you're going for that ultra smooth ultra high-end looking uh, fashion and beauty retouched stuff. So here I'm just gonna fade my shadow into my highlight a little bit here and I'll go to the burn layer. I'll do the same thing there, just kind of fade it together a little bit. I'm gonna pull a little bit through here on that side of her face. I'm still working in the shadows now. I went back to dodging. I'm gonna smooth out here underneath her skin. And then here where, where we're not completely getting rid of that dodging, we just go through and make sure that it's still blending back to the original skin nicely. So at this point, I think I'm gonna zoom out. Like I said, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing this and don't forget other areas of skin, arms, neck, shoulders, stuff like that. We're just playing around with uh, the face right now. But this is what we've got now. So if I go back to my original image, there's what we had when we began. There's what we've got now. So in terms of getting rid of a bunch of little blemishes and just flattening the skin uh, overall, 
that's what we've achieved at this point. But you can see how smooth and uniform her face looks. And if you're looking at an area and it's not quite right, like you can almost see my brush stroke going through there, you would just go back in. Uh, so here I go back into my dodging and just play around with that and just say, all right, well, let me just kind of mess around with it until it pulls together nicely, go to burning if I need to burn a little bit and, and really make sure it all comes together nicely. If absolute worst comes to worst, I suppose you could go into your mask and apply some blurring to a specific area, but you probably don't want to do that because that's just something that's going to blur the entire mask. And it's just better to get it right, right out of the, right out of the tip of the brush. All right, so let's talk about introducing some contrast. My two favorite ways right now to introduce contrast to these kind of images, you know, very cleanly lit studio portraiture. Number one, you're going to go with a curves adjustment layer and just use an S curve. So we're going to pull down here. You can see we're getting some nice tone in her skin, uh, oversaturated for sure. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second. Pull highlights up. Uh, the curves adjustment as you mess with the contrast does play with the saturation as you see. So the quick fix is just setting it to the luminosity blend mode. And you can see there's before and there's after and we don't we don't uh, introduce all that crazy um, Crazy saturation and I may actually reduce the opacity a little bit of that and uh, then I would go just right back into camera raw and well, let me reduce that opacity again. I would go right back into camera raw. So the way I get to that is by merging all the visible layers to a new layer, command shift option E, that's control shift alt E on the PC. And I'll just call this like finish. And again, guys, this is a crash course. You can spend a lot more time and do a lot more detail oriented work. I just want to give you some ideas of what I do when I attack these images. All right, we're going to go filter camera raw filter. And once we're in camera raw, it's just up to you at this point. Um, do we need to adjust the color? Maybe we'll uh, check the white balance against that gray backdrop. So there we go. That kind of makes it nice and crisp. Maybe I'll give it a little more contrast here. And we'll give it a little bit of a mid-tone punch as well. Accentuate both shadows and highlights using some clarity. Mm, not too much clarity though. Something kind of like that. And then of course you can zoom in. You can add more sharpness and things like that. So zoomed into 100%. I'll just go amount, add a little sharpness, and then I'll add a little mask to my sharpness as well, something like so, and hit OK. So if we go back to the image that we started with, there's what we had, and here's what we have now. So we just kind of pump it up a little bit, boost it up. The starting image wasn't bad at all, right? But like I said, it already had some retouching done. Um, but this is, you know, you're going to get something more like this out of your camera. And then it's a process of, I like to target blemishes, clean up edges and hairs, you know, flyaway hair, stuff like that. And then that really important flattening, dodging and burning to really just help smooth the skin. And by the way, you can use that up in the hair too, help flatten out some of the highlights or build up some of the shadows, things like that, uh, to just really clean up your images across the board here in Adobe Photoshop. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Turn those notifications on as well. And uh, also check out this video. 25 different cool and useful tips and tricks in Photoshop. I think you'll really enjoy it. You can use that link on the screen and check it out right now. And thank you so much for watching this video all the way until the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.